Welcome back guys, and uh, today I'm going to bring you the deck tech for the deck I'm deciding to run for the Steam Showdown. Uh, this is my actual second time doing this tournament, I'm, I hosted the, the last one I did on this channel. For those of you who remember that mighty uh, Flame Shadow deck. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm I missed the last one, I'm rejoining this one, it's hosted by Crider now. And uh, yeah, so... Really... <laughs> Are we, I haven't had as much time to test decks as I'd like, I've been quite busy these last couple of weeks, but uh, I decided pretty early on I wanted to either go under or over, and uh, well, I actually had a preference for going under, so I was I was testing a lot of, actually, I was actually very close to bringing either Vampires or Is It Burn, and uh, in the end I, just, I decided that they're, they're too easy to disrupt, like Vampires, if you kill that turn 2 player you've pretty much lost the game. And if you if you know you're playing a vampire deck, then you can like mulligan, looking for stuff like fiery impulse or dead weight. And then if you, like I said, if you kill that turn two player, then you win. It's pretty similar with is it burn, and that if you manage they they have a lot of burn obviously, but if if you manage to take out every single creature like the storm chase mages and the uh, thermal alchemists, then they don't really have enough to get to get you down to zero. So it's kind of a uh, it's kind of then I don't think they're good choices for a tournament just because they're kind of linear. And uh, so I couldn't really think. I mean, I, I messed around with humans a bit actually. I've got a humans build. Where is it? Uh, here. Just a green white humans. I don't know. I just didn't. I wasn't finding humans fun. Like, everyone in, to, in these tournaments, in these S, well, at least from the one I did, everyone completely over prepared for aggro <laughs> considering how many people actually bring it. I think uh, in the first time around, there was like three red deck wins and that was it. Granted, two of them made it to the top eight, <laughs> but uh, people like everyone main deck sweepers, everyone main deck removal and stuff. So I just kind of felt, and most of the time, most people are bringing mid range or like control. So I thought, hey, I don't really want to be the one guy who's playing the deck that everyone's trying to beat. So I went, screw, it, let's try and go above. So then I was like, you know what? Let's play. I was, I was really actually. Then when I decided I wanted to go above, I was going to bring S for control, which was the deck actually. So. We play last one video, and it's actually this build. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was really enjoying this, and then I realized, hang on, it's probably not a good idea to bring control when I'm terrible at control, at playing control into a tournament where you know there's gonna be pressure on you and stuff. So I decided, hey, let's move on to ramp, and then I moved on to grow ramp. Didn't really like it. This deck actually only has one new card. <laughs> it's got a collective defiance. It's the only new card in the deck. So I went screw it. Let's go back to angel ramp, new and improved build. And this is what I'm going to bring to the Steam Showdown, so... Uh, it's changed a lot from my, my initial uh, Angel build, like, a lot. I'm now very Delirium focused, it's a it's a completely different deck to be brutally honest. It's just got, it's got the Angels in, but the entire shell around it's completely changed, but I'll go through all the cards now. So, it's, uh, it's Delirium base, as you can see here, and then uh, you just got your finishers, it's fairly straightforward. Sorry, my voice is going here, but it's, it's a ramp deck. So, you know, we've got ramp, but... Early game, it was very, it was a tough choice between Nullwood Dryad and uh, Jardy Offshoot. Obviously, Jardy Offshoot probably. I mean, this isn't a traditional ramp deck, as you can probably already aware just by that brief, a uh, brief glance. But uh, I like it because it trades. It, it instead of just blocking all day, it can trade. So and then late game, it's still relevant. So it's a one mana three three death touch. So I mean, it's it and in this deck, it's it's fairly easy to get delirium and with this card it's not the end of the world if you don't have delirium it's not good but it's not the end of the world and you know if you're playing like planeswalker decks it can help you put more pressure on than offshoot i will say that in some matchups the uh the life gain will be an issue but uh i mean the the life gain we don't get from jardy offshoot will be an issue but i don't know i think in the long run i tried out both of them and i think i prefer it and then i would try it just because it's a bit more I'll say aggressive in that sense, and I think this deck can afford to be. And we'll actually go through two cards at once here. We've got Vessel and Nascency, two of them, and we have uh, four Grapple of the Past. As you can see, we're very graveyard based. The reason for this is because uh, we've got Amiria Shepherds and uh, Brunas in the deck, all four actually. Which means that uh, you, 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 you kind of want to fill up your graveyard so they have value the turn, they, they can have good value the turns they come down. And you know, I mean, Grapple of the Past is insane. It's actually late game. It can almost be like 
just to fetch up your best creature or land or whatever. Like, uh, if you've milled out, like, I don't know, it's not unusual to mill out, like, I don't know, 20 cards or whatever over the course of a game just by playing cards and, you know, casting these spells. And then, like, you can you can bring back, like, an Ulamog for free if you just want to fetch up a planes that you've milled and you've got an Ulamog in there. And you've got, it's just, it's a really powerful card. And then, I've only got two vessels. I used to have three, but I don't know. The thing with Vessel is that it takes up your entire turn one and your entire turn two. I mean, I'd almost rather just play it turn three and just pretend it's a three round spell in that sense. But, uh, I don't know. I didn't think we need, I mean, I've not found it difficult to get Delirium in this deck. Most, I mean, we can get, normally we can get creature, instant, sorcery just by playing spells. Either be ramp and then, you know, creatures and stuff. And then you only really need land or, uh, enchantment. So it's, it's, it's not too hard. I, I've, never, I've not really found it too difficult to, and it's not really the end of the world. It's not really a dedicated Delirium deck. You need four card types. The only actual Delirium cards are Nullwood Dryad. Which, which matter, because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to count Death Cap Cultivator as a Delirium card. But the, the only ones that matter really are Ishkana and uh, Nullwood Dryad. So you've got, you've got a bit of leeway for the Delirium train. And I just think uh, these are... They, they get you, they help you dig for whatever you need, and uh, this deck has a lot of specific cards, so I, I, I kind of like this duty game theme we got going on. Then we have our two drop creatures, Death Cap Cultivator. Just ramp, it's a ramp deck. Uh, he can help you get out like a turn 3 explosive vegetation, which is pretty good. In a Magic Christmas or something, you can have a turn 3 Gisela. And uh, he gives you access to black mana, which is good for Ishkana, it's the only source of black in the deck. But I mean, Ishkana, you don't really focus on the uh, on the uh, whole uh, second ability thing. But Death Cup Cult, I like him. A lot of people say he just gets hit by removal, but if they're removing your Death Cup Cult, it means stuff like Tyler's Tracker might live. It means stuff like, uh, I don't know. It just means, I mean, obviously, if they, I mean, they're not going to, if they blow a Declaration of Stone or something on a Death Cup Cult, you're pretty happy. If they blow a Fiery Impulse or Deadwit, it means it's not hitting stuff like Tyler's Tracker or Sylvan Advocate. Which I think is just a win-win all round, and uh, if they don't, then obviously you just ramp in yourself, which is pretty good. And uh, the second ability, Delirium Hey, it's, it's not irrelevant late game if you have a 2-1 death touch that can like, block a big creature and kill it. I'd say probably one of the most important spells in the deck next is Blessed Alliance. As you can see, I'm not actually running Declaration in Stone, and yet I'm th running a 3 Blessed Alliance. That's, that's how much I value this card. Being able to gain life whenever you want, or kill a creature, or in best case scenario, both, is just fantastic. And uh, I'd say it's 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 one of our outs versus aggro. I'd say this deck's weakness is we don't like the faster decks. We have specific cards that we can draw. Both, I mean, we've got cards in the deck that will save us against aggro, but there's a lot of cards in the deck that uh, you know, kind of dead, not not really, yeah, kind of dead draws, if you know what I mean, like. They'll be good cards, but by the time we get there, they were dead. We need ways to uh, get there. So, like, if you keep a hand with, like... If you're playing a control deck and you kept a hand with, like, two explosive vegetations and then, like, I don't know, a vessel or whatever, it seemed pretty decent, but against aggro, that's just a death sentence. But uh, this card just helps you save you. It just helps you buy loads of time, stall, kill a creature, gain life, get... And, uh, I mean, it's... It's huge. I, I mean, I can't really overstate it how important this card is in the right matchups and stuff and like hell you can like bag like a guy's avenger and all my doll if you're lucky but we need it's my it's my roof it's my removal of choice for two mana because also because we're playing a ramp deck it's not exactly like we're trying to close out the game fast which means that basically our declaration stone says exile creature they draw a card because we're not gonna be able to kill them before they can crack that clue so uh, I like I like Blessed Alliance. It's my it's my removal choice, like I said, and uh, it's just an important card. And then we get onto three drops here. We're playing a ramp deck, so Nissa not really much to say. She's just Nissa. We can in theory get her to uh, out and um, flipped on turn four, I think. If 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 we had the god draw, but that's obviously not too likely. But eh. And then uh, Tyler's tracker just gives you value. You can take over a game if they can't remove it. That's it's like it's rare that that's pretty rare. But most of the time he's gonna come out. He's gonna get you at least one clue, maybe two, and then he's just gonna eat a removal spell, which is not unreasonable for a three drop. If they're removing three drops, like I said, they might not have the removal left for our later drops. A one of reclamation sage because 
a mill deck would just be a death sentence for us. Same with like fever visions, they're both really hard to get around. And because we have all this stealth mill and uh, you know ways to get back from the graveyard, he can actually come up. Like Rick, I'd say this deck is pretty well suited against enchantments because we have Reclamation Sage, we have uh, Woodland Bellower to fetch it up, Green Warden, uh, all this stealth mill and stuff, and then we have a uh, you know four grapples with the pass to bring uh, Reclamation Sage back if we need it. So I think we're in a pretty good situation. As long as they don't exile the Sage, it should be around to remove as many enchantments as we want. Get into our ramp now, we have three Nissa's Pilgrimage and three Explosive Vegetations. It might seem weird running uh, Nissa's Pilgrimage considering we have uh, a Myria Shepherd in the deck because she's obviously a lot better with planes. But I mean, he, this deck, this thing's you out of all your quote unquote useless lands late game. And it's uh, being able to just guarantee like the next three land drops because it's it's definitely not unusual to have Spell Mastery on uh, turn, turn three by the time you cast this. So I mean, it just gives you, it guarantees your land drops the next couple turns and uh, thins out your deck of cards which you don't want to be drawn later on. And uh, explosive vegetation is kind of more the same. It's just a good ramp to accept this time. It it does gel with uh, with uh, Muria Shepherd and uh, I mean it's it just gets you to Ulmog. It's we all ramp deck. We need ramp. It's fairly straightforward. I mean you can you, this deck's still possible with, like the turn six Ulmog in the, with the right draw, which is good and then uh, you know extra lands allows you to do stuff with like uh, sack and clues and just gives you more mana to go around stuff and then a uh, sandwich in between is Gisela we're an angel deck of course she's in here she's one of our hedges against the aggro decks uh, along with two other cards actually but uh, Gisela if they can't remove if an aggro deck can't remove it you most likely just win if they can then eh, I mean it's a hedge. It's it's a hedge in the way that hopefully it buys you enough time to uh, that they can't play a creature. They have to remove it instead of uh, playing out, getting more creatures on the board. So I mean, it does buy you a turn generally. And it, like I said, if they can't remove, it, if they don't have the decoration stone or whatever, then she just wins the game. And of course, she can meld. <laughs> it's I doubt it's going to come up too often, but I mean, you know that it's 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 there in the deck. It can happen. People have to play around it. And if it does actually succeed in a meld, and there's really not too much that can deal with it. As you can see, uh, you can't cast spells with three or less, so that means like Anguish and Make and Declaration of Stone don't work. It pretty much has to be Obnix List, Planar Outburst, you know, stuff like that. So they have... And then, uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, meld, I'm not going to count Gisela as a uh, Brazella. She's, she's there for the front side. And if the back side works, then hey, if you have the situation, go for it. But it has come up often. Uh, if I think this is probably the best way to meld them, but as as a mythic and a rare, it's not exactly like you can rely on it as a win condition. Another hedge against aggro is uh, Ishkana. Just being able to put so many bodies on the field means they probably can't attack profitably. And uh, even if they can, then you can stall them out by jumping for like four turns in a row, which should be enough to get you there. And it's just it's just a good card. Delirium's easy to get in this deck. And the second Billy is, like I said, 95% irrelevant, but you know. In Christmas land, when we've got a Death Cap Cult of Air out there, we can uh, drain them for three. It's a. Uh, and, like, you know, with, with all these weight, like I said, with all these weights to self mill and bring stuff back, these 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 random one of mythics come up more than you think. Like, if you're. If you're you essentially say. This, like, a uh, Grapple of the Past is essentially dig for, dig air three deep for it. So, I mean, if you go, like, Grapple of the Past and Vessel and Ascency, which went seven cards deep, which is, uh. Pretty powerful when you're hedging these one-off mythics for specific matchups. Yeah. This is a card I'm not sure on. We've got two planar outbursts, but I'm really not sure if they should be tragic arrogance or not. It was a tough choice. I eventually went for planar outburst, but I, like I said, I'm, I'm really not too sure. It was it was a pretty close call. Tragic arrogance. I mean, we do run big creatures, so tragic arrogance could be a lot better. And you know you get these the added bonus if you're really far behind with enchantments and uh, like if they play like an Oath and Nissa and then like a I don't know a Sphinx's Tutelage or something then you can obviously make them keep the Oath. But a uh, Tragic Arrogance, it's just in theory we could have a draw where we go like turn two like turn one Vessel crack it, turn two and then like turn three Ramp into turn four Planar Outburst. And that's just I mean Tragic Arrogance we haven't we haven't put a creature on the field yet for uh, Tragic Arrogance. I just kind of want for slightly more consistency, but 
I'm not sure. Maybe I should have went for power. But either way, it's 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 a board wipe. We obviously need board wipes in these sort of decks because we need to buy time to get to our big stuff. And uh, I'm happy with two. I'm happy with two two planar outbursts because we ramp so much. We can awaken this, and you know you can like wipe the board and then pressure a planeswalker at the same time, which is uh, pretty good. So I don't know. It's 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 a tough choice, but I think I think I like planar outbursts better. And uh, five five mana, wipe the board completely. Obviously they could have like a selfless spirit which exists now on Avacyn, but I don't know. Maybe you, you try and bait one of them out with like a blessed lion or like a cre um, creature sacrifice or something like that. Then we go into our bombs here. We've got Linvala. She again is a hedge against aggro if you got too far behind. And uh, she's a fantastic angel. It used to be Avacyn in here actually, but I was willing to go one mana above. And then uh, it allows for some pretty disgusting uh, Bruna chains where you can go Bruna. Uh, get back Linvala, then like jump with Linvala, and then jump with them both, and then go Amiria Shepherd, bring back Bruna, bring her to your hand, and then cat. And like you can, there was a game I played where I gained like 30 life just with Linvala. It was it was pretty brutal. I just kept jumping, like grappling with the past and stuff. It was a, uh, it was pretty powerful. And she's just a she's just a good card. Five power flyer means uh, she got five toughness as well, which means she dodges languish and grasp for darkness. It's pretty nice, which is something Avison didn't do, so that's kind of why I went for that. Green Water Mouth, not really much to say, it just says get your best thing from your graveyard, and because we're self milling a lot, there'll be plenty of good stuff in our graveyard, and uh, a 5-4 is pretty good to tack onto that, and if they don't exile it, you get another card on death. So, <laughs> like, it's just, it's just not, not really much to say. Same with Woodland Bellow, being able to fetch up a Tireless Tracker or a Tireless Tracker or Sylvan Advocate is pretty good. Worst case scenario, death cap cult there, but being able to fetch up one of them two two creatures here is pretty fantastic. Along with in this in the right matchup, you can fetch up the sage. So it's just being able to put like eight power and like seven toughness on the board for like six mana. Not really much to say. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, getting onto the angels now, we have two Amiria Shepherd. She's expensive, but she just. I mean, you, you play it, then you play a land, and you start getting... You just go nuts off with uh, Amiria Shepherd. Like, Amiria Shepherd land, bring back one of these three creatures is just... It's back-breaking. Even if they have the removal for the Shepherd at that point, it's not too much. And, you know, it just gets you anything in your deck which you need. Any permanent, anyway, actually. But, I mean, uh, one thing I like to do is you can, like, return vessels to your hand with, like, a green source, and then you can play a planes or whatever. And use the vessel, dig for more planes. It's a... Uh, it's a it's pretty nice loop. And, uh... Yeah, not much to say. We're an angel deck. She's she's good. Uh, I don't think she's like backbreaking or anything. I definitely wouldn't 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 run more than two if I had the choice. But eh, she's she's a uh, she can win games and she allows you like once she's she's pretty good against like a control deck because I know it's a pretty ironic saying a seven mana creature which has no air protection and only four toughness is good against control, but. If, if they're spending all their mana to remove all your early stuff like all this, and then you just play a Meteor Shepherd or Green One to start bringing stuff back, they're gonna, they're not going to be able to keep up with you in their, in terms of removal. And uh, she's just good. I mean, this, I'm kind of downplaying her, but she can't. She is essentially the reason you go Angels along with Bruna. And she's and uh, you know she's just bring bringing back stuff from the graveyard is apparently good. Who, who would have guessed? And the other angel now, I think this one's my favourite, but Bruna, the Fading Light. 5-7 Flying Vigilance. I mean, a lot of this deck you can attack in the air, like, I mean, look, every every creature so far, like, all our angels are, more, like, 4-5 power, and I got evasion, which means they're going to be tough to block. But Bruna brings back any human or angel, which means, I mean, if you bring back an angel, it's going to be hard to lose the game, but... Even if you just bring back a human, you've got Death Cap Cuttle there, or, uh, Tyler's Tracker again. Which again isn't terrible, and uh, she can meld as well. Bang. But <laughs> so obviously she works with Gisela if you self mill Gisela, but as a one of mythic you can't really rely on that. But you know she's there. If they tap out, you can flip into Brazella and then just win the game from then on. But she's a she's pretty good. She's again she's a she's she's good. I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of downplaying these angels, but I've, I've played quite a lot with this deck, and they just do what they say on the tin, which is bring good stuff back from your graveyard and then proceed to outvalue them for the game. And 7 toughness is really hard to get around. You need kind of unconditional removal at that point, like a murder or de 
decoration stone. And uh, if they're murdering it, then you can bring it back later on and stuff, so. I like Bruna, she's pretty good. And then, of course, on the top of our curve is Ulamog. Surprise, surprise, he is in our ramp deck, and he will win games, and... Being it, he's, he's, he's a good answer against Planeswalker if they spend like turns 5 and 6 playing Obnixilus and Sorin. Normally that's just game over, but if you've been spending that ramping into Ulamog, then uh, it's not really a big problem anymore. And the mana base is, is uh, fairly straightforward here. We have... Uh, we don't run any gates or evolving wilds or anything because... We want as many planes as possible for the Emiria Shepherd, and we want to keep our mana base fairly consistent here. So I mean... We have 14 green sources and 13 white sources. Probably is a bit tilted. Probably could tilt one, more, one or two more towards green if we're feeling dangerous. But uh, with stuff like grapple with the past, uh, vessel and nascency, explosive vegetation, I'm really not worried about my fixing here. And I mean, I've, I mean, I've been land screwed. There was a game I played with this deck. I kid you not. I had five lands in the top 30 cards, and I actually managed to win that game because of Ishkana. He just stole out the board, and um, well, she just stole out the board actually. And then I just managed to eventually, eventually I, I got there. <laughs> but 5 lands in the top 30 was pretty disgusting. But I mean, it's 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 23 lands. I don't actually like running like 26 in ramp because it's just so easy to flood out if you don't... Like if, you, like if you've exposed to vegetation like twice, you're probably going to have an empty hand and you can have like 8 mana on the field or whatever. So, you don't want, you don't want to be drawing lands at that point unless you obviously you've got Ulmog. But I mean... You want more. You want to balance your threats and the uh, ramping. That's why I don't go four and four. Explosive vegetation and uh, Nissa's pilgrimage because there's there's just some hands you can have where you go like it's just all mana fix and mana ramp where you've just got no interaction with your opponent and you just have to hope that they're not fast. And in a tournament set, and they can really punish you for that. So I just decided, you know what? We've got eleven planes in the deck for Amiria Shepherd with the F. Because kind of previous still works as well. If I could zoom in on it, as you can see, it's a forest plains. So I'm, I'm just I'm happy with this mana base. It's not let me down yet. Probably could be optimized a bit more, but it's good enough for the job, I think. What did I take out the deck? I think I took out land. Uh, yeah, I did. So I mean, that's really the deck. I'm not. I'm assuming I'm not going to see my changes here, but it's it's been doing pretty well actually. I think I've lost one game online, and it was to a a mana starve, I think. And I'd, I'm, I just said the mana base is alright, and I just made two instances where it's uh, let me down, but... The, the, it was it was one of them ridiculous ones where it's not about what you won, it was... I mean, this, the, the one I won there, like I said, 5 and 30, and then the other one was something like... I had three draw steps to hit a land to Ishkana to stabilize or something. Like, I think I kept a 4 lander, and then, uh... I, d I didn't see a fifth land the entire game, and I like I, that game went pretty long. I think it was like 20 cards deep or something. And I had like an Ishka in a hand. I had a uh, I don't know. I had ways like even if I just draw a ramp spell, I could have like Linvalid or something. I just kind of stood there and dirtled for a couple of turns. But yes, I mean the decks is very value based. I think it's I think it's going to be fairly weak against Aggro. I think it's weakest matchups Aggro. I think if they just go under us and we don't draw the right cards, then we can just lose the game pretty fast and it'll look, it'll look very bad but if the game goes along we're gonna I think we're gonna be tough to beat even against a control deck like I said we can we have so much ways of grapple the past and stuff to recur our graveyard that eventually they're gonna run out and says and one of these cards can take over a game so that's, uh, that's how I ended up here I'm looking forward to this I guess we'll see how we do I've, I've labeled the deck two and three but <laughs> I haven't seen anyone else I'm actually recording this on Friday and deck lists get revealed on Sunday and I'm going to be uploading this on Sunday as well but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this deck I wanted to play something fun and uh, hopefully obviously the other lists haven't been revealed yet but hopefully uh, some of the people have joined in the spice and that's how we ended up on this deck so uh, not really much else to say at this point I think we, we covered everything I mean cards are missing what could, what could we really say we're missing here uh, Gideon's not in the deck because I don't think he did enough because, because we're a ramp deck, it means we can't afford... We're essentially comparing Gideon to, like, six, ma seven mana cards. Like, I'm, Gideon's good, but he's not as good as Linvala, if you know what I mean, in that sense. Or he's not as good as, like, Woodland Bellower. And in this deck, it's kind of a mute point, being able to come out a couple turns earlier. So, uh, Gideon's not in the deck. Declaration's so I can't run over. Uh, what else isn't in the deck? 
Guy's Revenge, I guess, would be a nice hedge against control, but I, I like my recursion theme rather than Guy's Revenge. He's just pretty. He's good in one matchup, and that's it. And uh, Uven Ward Hydra, I guess. I don't know. I don't like a creature that's just big and got reach. He doesn't have trample and uh, no evasion, and is fairly easy to remove if they've just got like it's. I don't know. I prefer what I've got right now, pretty much. So I think we're gonna call it quits there. I don't know when the first match will be played. I think uh, matchups get revealed on the 14th, and then obviously we'll have to. I'll have to schedule and organize with whoever I get matched up against. But uh, yeah. That's all I've really got to say, so uh, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully we will be back, and we will legendary start off with a win, because I think every tournament I've played so far on this channel, I've lost. <laughs> I've lost the first match anyway, so yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you later.